Oh my goodness, I seriously love having the ability to own a laser cutter and engraver because I can take things like a random piece of rubber and a block and turn them into a freaking stamp. How stinking cool. My name is Ashley Falco and welcome back to the Craft Castle. So there are a lot of uses for a laser engraver. So if you don't have a laser engraver in your craft room, you are seriously missing out. And I have the most perfect project for us to make today. These stamps right here are so much fun and actually really easy to make. Now there are a lot of cool things that you can make with your laser cutter and engraver, but these right here take the freaking cake. They turn out like professional stamps. They look so freaking good. All right, so I'm gonna be making a teacher themed stamp today, but honestly, you can make any type of stamp that you want. I'm gonna give you the settings and how to set up your X tool perfectly so you can have a finished product done without any issues. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. The very first thing you want to do is open up a blank window in Xtool's creative space. What I always suggest when we're doing any type of design work within Xtool is that we just keep our Xtool off. The reason for that is, is right now we have a nice bright white working canvas. If we were to turn our Xtool on and connect it, what would happen is, is this white screen would end up turning black because it would show us the image of our bed. And then it gets hard to try and do any type of design work when the machine is turned on. So for my particular stamp that I'm gonna be doing, it's going to be a teacher stamp. I'm gonna be doing zero design work essentially inside the Xtool creative space. I actually created a stamp design of my own. So what I wanna do is insert my SVG file. So what I'm gonna do is find my SVG file and I'm gonna drag and drop it into Xtool creative space. So this right here, I want to change it over to engrave. This is going to be what my rubber stamp is going to look like. Okay, so because my stamp is gonna be circular, what I'm gonna do is come up here to insert and insert shape. And I just am going to draw any size circle. Doesn't matter what size it is or even if it is actually a circle and not an oval. When I insert that in there, I am going to unlock right here. And now my wooden blocks are three inches large. So I'm gonna make my circles 2.75 inches just so it gives it a little bit of breathing room on my wooden block. Okay, now that I have it at 2.75, what I'm gonna do now is copy and paste this one circle and I'm gonna drag this over here just for right now. Now this circle right here, I'm going to set this over to cut. And this circle right here, I'm gonna set this to engrave. Now for this circle, I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna move this over to a different color just so we can see what we're doing and then click out of it. I am going to take my stamp design and I'm gonna turn this over to 2.75 inches just like what my circle is. I'm gonna take this stamp design and I'm gonna arrange this to the front. Okay, and before we move forward, I'm actually going to make this, this particular stamp two ways because there are gonna be two different finishes of what you want your stamp to look like. So before we move forward, what I'm gonna do is select this right here, which is going to be my stamp, shift on my keyboard and also this, and I'm gonna copy and paste this and drag this down. Now what I'm going to do is selecting my original stamp, shift on my keyboard and also that weird mustardy yellow circle, and I'm gonna go align and align these horizontally, going back to align again, and I'm going to align these vertically. Now what I'm going to do is come up here and to combine, and then I'm gonna press subtract. Then what I'm going to do is selecting this weird mustard color. I am going to press shift on my keyboard, and then this circle that's over here on the right, and I'm gonna align these to the center horizontally and align these vertically. Then selecting this one right here that I've done no changes to, I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard and then also this circle, and I'm gonna align these horizontally and align these vertically. So when I put them side to side, you can see that they look totally different. That's because we have two different types of stamps that we are going to create. When we go and engrave and cut these, you are gonna see the huge difference between the two stamps. Okay, so now what I want to do is change my settings over for my material. So I'm gonna select both pieces that are gonna be engraved and I am going to change my settings over. 
I'm gonna change it over to power 10 and speed 10. Now in a previous video, I showed you how to create a material test grid. These test grids are absolutely freaking amazing. They made making this project so much easier. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in and I'm gonna select the larger circles that I want to cut out. And these ones, I'm gonna do power 78 and speed 10. Now I do suggest when you are adjusting your settings, my settings are perfect for my material with using my machine. I would strongly suggest either A, using my settings as a guide, a starting guide to your material, or creating your own test grid on your material just to make sure that you have the right settings for your machine. Okay, now let's go and turn on our X tool. Then what you want to do is insert your rubber. This is where those test grids came in handy because look at all of those settings. This is how I was able to determine what settings were the best for this material. So I'm just gonna lay this inside of my bed, putting it pretty close to the middle of my cutting bed. Then what I'm gonna do is shut my machine and going back over to the program, you will see that the X tool refreshed the bed. So now this is what my bed looks like. Okay, the very first thing you want to do, I'm gonna just keep it as the user defined material and I'm gonna come over here to this little aiming tool and I am going to put this box on top of my material that I'm gonna be engraving and cutting. What you wanna do now is that anytime we do rubber stamps, you always want what you see to be backwards to you. So I'm gonna select both of my stamps and I'm gonna come up here to reflect and reflect these horizontally. So now my lettering is backwards for me, that's perfect. So I'm gonna select this and move this down. You do not wanna resize this at this point because we size these perfectly to what our wood blocks are. Now all we wanna do is press process and then press start. Going over to the machine, what you wanna do is make sure your fan is turned on if you're using an external fan. And then all you wanna do is press your magic button. Okay, now that it's done, I'm gonna open up the lid and we are gonna be able to take out our stamps. Okay, these are the two finished stamps. They're gonna look dusty. What we need to do is take them over to the sink and wash them off. Then what I'm going to do is insert my block right here. This is what I'm gonna glue the rubber to to make the stamp. So I'm just gonna put that in the center of my bed, just like that. And then I'm gonna close the lid. Okay, now back into our design screen. What you want to do is just press refresh on your X tool. Now what I'm going to do is use this closed capture view and I wanna put that over my block. I'm gonna select my two stamps right here and just move them out of the way. So now what we want to do is engrave our stamp onto our block of wood to just like a traditional stamp would have. So I'm going to take this one right here and I'm going to move it over. I don't need to cut anything. I just need to engrave it. And I'm going to reflect this back because I want to be able to read it on top. I'm going to auto measure onto my block. Then I'm going to take my engraving and I'm going to put it onto my block. And I'm going to try and center it onto my block. Now for this, we're gonna need to change the settings over. Let me go to the three millimeter basswood plywood setting. Oh, we're gonna go back into the autofocus feature. Clicking on that, it says that it's going to do power 10, speed 200. Why don't we just trust that? Okay, when we're done doing that, then all you wanna do is press process and then press start. Going over to the machine, you wanna make sure that your external fan is on. And then you wanna press the magic button. And this is going to do the engraving. All right, now let's open up the lid. Look at how good this turned out. Now let's take this and our rubber over to the work table and we will assemble it over there. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is show you the difference of what it looks like stamped on a piece of paper. The reason for that is I'm only going to do one of these on here. So obviously with any stamp, you're going to need a ink pad. So you just take that off and then blot the ink on your piece of rubber. And then you would just press this down. Okay, 
Okay, that's what one of them looks like. It's gonna be a really bad uh, print just because I don't have a piece of wood and it's not very, you know, flat and even, but you get the point of what the final look will look like. Okay, so here are the differences between those two engravings that we did. This one right here is the one that we just uploaded into Xtool and didn't do anything besides put a cut circle around. This one right here was the one that we sliced into it and so it looks like this. This is the one that you have more of an engraving on, which is actually how I prefer to you know, have this look. So this is the one that I'm gonna be using today for my finished stamp. So when you have your finished stamp, what you wanna do is make sure that your stamp is facing you on both sides. You want to turn this over. Now I'm gonna be using some super tight uh, multi-grab 360 just because this right here is non-toxic. Then you want to put a good bit of that all over the back of your piece of rubber, just like that. Okay, now what we want to do is make sure and have this nice and centered onto our piece of wood. Okay, then when you're done, because mine has ink on it already, I am just gonna put my piece of paper over it and I'm just gonna press down really hard. If you did not have ink on yours, you did not have to put a piece of paper down. You could have just pressed it down with your fingers. Oh, look at how cute that turned out. <laughs> Try it again. Okay, you wanna make sure that this didn't slide around at all. It's nice and center onto your wood block. And then like there's no glue coming out anywhere. Oh my gosh, seriously, this turned out so freaking cute didn't it? Obsessed. Such a great little teacher gift. Okay, so wasn't this project like so easy to do? I mean, all we had to do was put in our piece of rubber, engrave and cut it, and then engrave the wood block in glue. That was it. Very little time for us to actually make things. So I need to know, what is your preference on a stamp? Would you like it like the way that I ended up creating it? Or would you like it like this? I need to know because I do know that everyone has a preference. Which one's yours? All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create, and I'll see you next time.